Welcome to my next video in the docu-series on a 1959 Fender Deluxe. It's a tweed version. It's really a Fender Deluxe. I'm going to talk about worker markings. You know, sometimes I like the, uh, the covering of an amp to just be what it is, unrestored, because I want to uh, remember that it is an amp that was played. You know, just have that with me. Someone actually made a living with the amp. Well, someone else actually built this amp and made a living with this amp and they left a mark. So every year, so there's a video out there on the web, really kind of cool to watch. Every spring uh, trade show, Fender would go, they would take orders on based on you know the interest level of the number of basses, guitars, and amps in this case. Seasonal workers were then hired or rehired soon afterwards and they would work this summer, early fall, producing uh, what Fender th perceived as the number of orders that they would have for the various products in their line. The, certain, the workers did everything. There was no one task as there is now. So they cut the wood, they sanded, they finished, they painted, they soldered, they tested, they packed, they shipped. The original quote is this, a jack of all trades is a master of none, but oftentimes better than a master of one. I want to pay a little bit of homage to the workers who built this amp. Uh, I think it's only right. Now then, this is a factory date mark. Well, I've talked about this in the uh, dating of the amp. IH, IH matches the chassis. If they match, you know, this is original. They're supposed to go together. Uh, this uh, says a G9 or G7. It is a, it's a construction mark. So in top right, I took the chassis out of the amps, so you can see where the sun don't shine. And what they've done here, since they are all craftsmen, you cut out the boards, and of course the boards had a box joint. You can't put a, the boards together in a different way because then there would be an overlap, so they go one way. So in order to figure out that these two boards go here, they marked that corner G9, to G9 so they know the marks go together on the trial fit and that makes that corner. So it is a construction mark. When I'm building boxes in, in my shop I do the same thing. I'll say AA or BB, CC, DD, front, rear, do that. Also tells them which way to orient the uh, baffle board because it's cut, this, the holes cut off center here on the bottom, in the back, on the top, is the mark R. So uh, when you're putting the, the boards together, they know then it doesn't go this way. The R has to be on top and it has to be to the back so they can get that box joint right. This is a worker mark. It's a piece of masking tape with a name on it. Before we move on, the green paints the factory mark. It authenticates that this is a factory assembled and or it is original. If it's missing or broken, it was modified by somebody else. But this is a worker mark and that's where we're paying homage today. So here it is, close up. Who is this? Let me help you a little bit. This is Lupe. She soldered the chassis board, and when she did, she put the tape in there, and she put in her name on that chassis. She was one of many. So this is Lupe at her workplace, assembling and soldering the amp together. Here's her name. She put it together. I got this off the internet, you know, a photo by Leo Fender, courtesy of Richard Smith. It came out of a book, but I was just fascinated. Who's this Lupe? And there, there's a picture of her. So if she wasn't soldering, she was probably finishing, painting, cutting, something. But this is Lupe. Here's Lily, another Fender Deluxe. Uh, Lily put this together. Here's that green paint, uh, intact. This is one out of a champ. So it's not just only the deluxe amps, but also the 59 Champ has Rachel in there. Other thing to point out, see this? I 
uh, nut and bolt. And right here where the thread meets the nut, there is no paint. That means that that interface, since the paint's missing, this amp was altered outside the factory. For some reason, I don't know, but what happens is uh, a little bit more inspection would have to be made here, but it also looks disturbed. So this assembly uh, suspect, it may not be original, it may have been replaced, it may have been worked on, but someone had a need to loosen these nuts and bolts as this one and this one to make a repair and put it back together again. So it's been disturbed. That's what happens to that paint. It's very brittle. As soon as you, un you loosen the nut, it flakes off. And of course, last but not least, obviously John wanted to let you know he had something to do with building the chassis because John wrote his name on the chassis in pencil. So for this amp, thank you John and Miss Lupe for putting together a fine uh, Fender Deluxe. Thank you for watching. Thank you.